Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're having a look at the STL Tonality plugin. The idea with this plugin is that essentially it's aiming to model a bunch of amps as favored by Howard Benson and Mike Plotnikov. Howard is one of the big names in rock and metal production, so I'm expecting this will sound pretty darn good. If we have a look at the interface real quick, you can see that rather than labeling them as specific amps, uh, obviously STL make Kemper profiles and Axe Effects packs as well. Well, and you know, they're, it's pretty clear what all of these are based on, but they call them AMP 1, AMP 2, AMP 3, AMP 4, and AMP 5. And I think this is a pretty cool approach to modeling. It's just kind of five things at work rather than like a whole plethora of amps and a whole IR collection. It's just like, here's some stuff that these guys obviously use all the time in the studio to actually make records. So we will have a listen to this in a really quick mix. And when I mean mix, I'm just going to do a track where I don't put any post EQ or anything on this. It'll just be drums, bass, and some guitars from the plugin with no post. So we'll get to that in a second. But having a look at the interface, like I said, you can select different amps. There's a tuner, there's a noise gate. You can adjust the input and the output gain and it's pretty simple there is a little drop down menu with different presets and preset banks you can choose from Howard Benson Mike Plotnikov and the STL tones presets I just want to play around with the amps a little bit and sort of dial them in uh, there is a pedal section so you can chuck some pedals in front of your amp if you want to try that out there's uh, I'm guessing something based around a tube screamer and then a simple delay and reverb and then there's a cab section where we can choose between five different cabinets which is pretty cool so it's a pretty bare bones kind of plugin. Uh, comparing this to stuff like I was saying before, was I saying before? Uh, I've been playing around with a lot of plugins in the last year, is what I should say. Uh, stuff like Reaxis and Spark by Mercurial Audio, which are amazing, and uh, their Neural DSP Fortin plugins. I reckon those two companies are probably making the best guitar plugins at the moment for what I like, which is hard rock and metal music. Uh, but they certainly give you a lot more options in terms of like the cab section, uh, which is good and is bad. You know, sometimes you just want something that works. Uh, you can load external IRs in here, which is primo, nice little feature. Uh, we'll have a listen to how the amp sound, how the different cabs sound. I'm guessing that cab one, from the look of it's like a basket weave with greenbacks. There's probably like a more modern cab uh, on these two. And then we've got like a sort of Fender Twin. And then I'm guessing like a tweed amp kind of thing. So enough talking. Let's actually have a listen to some of the amp tones. I'm going to try and... At the moment, you can see that this is the cab is locked to the amp selection. So as you choose a different amp, it will go to the corresponding cab. We'll just stick with that and we will have a listen to the tones. Let's go back to the amp section. I'm going to turn the pedals off. So I'm guessing amp one is based around like a Bogner Überschall, which is one of my favorite uh, real life amps. I don't own one. I would love to own one. Uh, but my main Axe FX patch that I use live is based around the Überschall. So let's just play with that. I'm using a PRS SC245 stock pickups into my UAD Apollo Twin. It's hitting Pro Tools with no post. Let's just play with the knobs. <laughs>
that's a pretty workable guitar sound. Uh, to me, there's a whole lot of fizz in that particular IR. So I'll try a different cab. I'll turn this little selection off and maybe we'll try cab two with the same settings. I want to keep the cab on. I want to turn the lock off. I think that's what I want to do. So cab two. <laughs> That's a lot better. I like that cab. Uh, that is the Ubershall, so amp one. Amp two, I'm guessing, is based around uh, the infamous Wizard amp. It starts off with like a clean sound at default. <laughs> That's super cool. I want to try that with a different cab. I like that one a bit more than the Uber, I think. That sounds really good as it is. I like Amp 2, so the Wizard is a winner, I think. Amp 3, this is going to be some kind of modded plexi. The EQ doesn't really sound like it's doing a whole lot on this particular model. Okay, the gain definitely worked. That's kind of cool. Super duper fizzy with that cab though. Let's try cab two. <laughs> That's not too bad. That's pretty brown sounding. Let's try the clean amps now. And we'll keep the cab stock. I'll turn the pedals off. Go back to the amp selection. As you can see, this is pretty easy to navigate. My go-to with Fender style amps is bass around two, uh, mids around three, Treble at about six, the so-called magic six settings. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's kind of cool for like a kind of greasy, moderate overdrive kind of thing. Let's try amp five, pedals off again. I'm guessing this is like a tweed. Kind of sounds tweety. That's pretty cool. What I'm hearing with a lot of these is they don't sound very processed. So it sounds like there's no low or high pass filtering on the IRs, which is good if you want to work with it in a mix. But on its own, the guitar sounds are, you know, they're a little bit kind of ugly sounding for use of a better term. But often u ugly sounds of what we want when we're kind of getting guitars to sit in the mix. So there's the amp cab and pedal selection. It's all really simple to use. There's not too much going on. So if you don't like too many options and you're scared of option paralysis, this is probably a good plugin to check out. But, you know, come with it, uh, there's a couple of those sounds in there which are just like, yeah, I, I can't really see myself using them or they're not like a super inspiring guitar sound. I find with stuff like... Um, Reaxis and Spark or even the Fort and Nameless, you, know, you just plug it in and it's like, whoa, that's a really great rock guitar sound. I want to play guitar and I want to play some riffs. These, to me, sound more of like the kind of thing that mixing engineers would like, where it's like if you're reamping guitars and you want something that's going to sit in a track. So let's have a listen to this in a track. I'm going to use Amp 4 uh, for all the clean stuff at the end. I think it was Amp 4 because uh, I've already recorded the clip, <laughs> one I prepared earlier. And then I'm going to use the Wizard for the kind of ACDC kind of sound and the Bogner, so Amp 2 and then Amp 1 for the uh, heavy stuff. And no post-EQ, I'm using uh, Stephen Slate drums and I just DI'd bass and it kind of sounds, it's got that like, you know, Howard Benson-y like attack of the bees in the high end and it's just a kind of character sound which I think you want when you're mixing guitar. So let's have a listen to it. <laughs> And right at the end there, you heard Amp 4 with heaps of delay and reverb, which I think is pretty cool being able to process all of this in the plugin. So I think my favorite sound for sort of rock stuff was Amp 2, bit of boost from the Tube Screamer. So gain all the way up, tone up, turn the delay off using Cab 2. Cab 2 is easily my favorite cab out of all of these. The Greenback, I'm guessing the Greenback IR Cab 1 is just way too sort of buzzy for me, but you might lack that kind of thing, again, if you're going for like the ACDC kind of thing, or there are a lot of modern, uh, it's, it's like a scuzzy sound to me. That's the way I would describe that. And uh, yeah, so Amp 2 with just the mids up, I thought that sounded great with this cab. <laughs> Thank you. 
So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, like I said, you would definitely need to actually, if you're mixing with it, chuck some post EQ on there. Uh, I don't, I can't see anywhere where you can add post EQ in the plugin. So that would be a pretty cool feature for them to add. But yeah, Amp 2 is pretty cool. I think if you were paying the full price of this plugin just to use that, it's a l kind of overkill a little bit. If you want like a really great metal or, you know, sort of super high gain hard rock kind of sound, maybe go for something like Reaxis or the Fort Nameless. I think I like those a little bit better. But for a really, you know, convincing commercial sounding rock guitars i mean it says howard benson on the plugin uh it does it's got that kind of thing i was listening to a couple of things that he produced and there is that sort of scuzzy top end in a lot of his stuff uh, again it's you know and i say this all the time it's like a lot of the time nice guitar tones don't sit well in a mix you want something with like some character in there so for a plugin these actually have some character a lot of the plugins are just way too smooth uh cab one can go in the bin i don't really like that one too much you might absolutely love it but the other cabs sound pretty good and uh amp three i wasn't super stoked on so yeah sort of like four out of five for each of those sections there but uh yeah that's what the stl tonality plugin actually does uh they also make like axe effects packs and kemper packs and you know part of me is always super cynical when it's like fifty dollars to buy like a pack based around somebody just because of their reputation i mean there's no guarantee that this stuff is going to work for you uh you know if this plugin didn't have howard benson's name on it i'm sure a lot of people would probably skim over a bit he's obviously a big name but you know if you if you like his production uh, and you're a mix engineer looking for a, like a plug-in to process guitars i think this is probably worth the money if you're a guitar player looking for like super inspiring guitar sounds to jam around with at home maybe this one isn't the one for you because like i said it's the the really raw guitar sounds there's not a whole lot of processing going on in there uh or if you're somebody like i said who you know if you're a guitar player and you do need something uh that you can just sort of reamp guitars with uh then it's probably more there so this is definitely like a kind of more of a mix ready plug-in to me uh, and you have to know how to use it and have to know how to post process it but um yeah it's not too bad at all. It's not my favorite guitar plugin of all time, but it sounds pretty good in a mix, which is what guitar plugins should do at the end of the day. And um, yeah, it's just funny, like watching that STL video where they've got Phil X there and he's just like foaming at the mouth going, oh my God, oh wow, yeah, it's so much like an amp. Oh yeah, all digital modeling sucks except for this thing. Um, yeah, someone needs to get Phil an X effects or something because this is good, but it's kind of not on the same level as something like that, but for a hundred bucks. What do you want? If you enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe, uh, hit the little bell and all that kind of thing. Go and check out all my other videos. You can watch videos about other plugins, guitar tones, uh, stuff like the Axe Effects, and I will see you guys around very soon. Again, thank you for watching.